Hey guys, it's me, Stormy, and I was getting dressed this morning and I was debating if I was going to do this video or not, but I think it's important that we talk about Has your zodiac sign changed? No! If you were a Virgo last night when you went to bed, short of any kind of magic or a reincarnation we're not aware of, you're still a Virgo this morning. Now, when you do look at evolutionary astrology and you're talking about progressions and things like that, that's a place where you could look and say, okay, I have progressed and I am... Um, considered to have lessons as a different sign, but that's a whole nother video, that's a whole nother topic, and feel free to look that up. As far as Western Sun Sign Astrology goes, let's talk about the fact that your sign has not changed. A big hullabaloo has been created again by between popular magazines on the internet as well as a collaboration with NASA on that. And is it any wonder that all of this stuff came back up? A conversation that is not new. They didn't just discover number 13th, our 13th warrior. They did not. This is just not new. But is it any wonder that it came up again in a Mercury retrograde? Yeah, I'd just love to bring that back in there, right? <laughs> so let's talk about some of the ideas that were presented because I read many different articles on this and I have read them over the years. Um, so let's talk about one thing. Consistently in every single one of the articles, they address the fact that the Babylonians, when they created the 12 signs of the zodiac, they knew about the 13th, right? They knew about it. They say that they didn't account for it out of convenience, which I don't know. I wasn't alive then. Maybe the 13th warrior just was not hot. I don't know. But the fact is in the astrology that we use today and has been used for thousands of years, we don't use it. But the thing is, is that first of all, that goes to show you that this is not a new conversation. They knew thousands of years ago. They knew that guy was up there and there was a reason that they didn't include it, right? Now, here's the other piece of that. I am the first one to tell you that a collaboration between astrology and astronomy is it's delicious. Like we should be working together. Astronomers tell us what's out there. We tell them what it means. It's a beautiful design that can, it's a beautiful design for helping each other live if we use it well. But I will say that some astronomers really do treat astrologers like we're idiots because this is the thing. When they created those 12 zodiac signs, their, their deal is that the sky has shifted from then and that's why the signs should be changing. But this is a totally known fact in the astrology community. And if you've been studying and you are really in the astrology deal, you know about the procession of the equinox. You know that we talk about that, that we acknowledge this very slow backwards kind of wobble that the earth has on its tilted axis. And what that does is that it creates... Um, it causes the sun's apparent alignment with the constellations to start looking different, okay? We know about it. We acknowledge it. Trust me, you could bring that up at any kind of astrology thing, and you're going to talk about that for like 10 hours, I promise you. So we acknowledge it, but sometimes they act like we don't. But keep in mind that they're basing this on constellation. Now, the other thing that they do... <clears throat> is they say that because this is a 13th constellation, that when we divide our zodiac wheel, like our slices, we get 12 slices of pizza. We don't account for this constellation, and that means that all of the signs are off. But that is just not the truth, because we do not base our wheel, we do not base our Western astrology on constellations. It's a derivative of it, but we don't base it on that. So let's look at a couple things that we do do and why it's important to understand. Now, the zodiac used in Western astrology is based on the seasons, not the constellations, right? We know that the planets go around the sun because we're not ridiculous. We know that. But in this type of astrology, we are Earth centric. So we look at how the planets are moving and grooving and doing what they do based on the idea that they go around us. That's how we interpret it, right? But what we do is we mark our planets against the four seasons, the autumn and spring, excuse me, equinoxes and the winter and the summer solstice. Those are our markers that we work with. And in the mathematical abstract deal that came about when they created this, this was perfectly accounted for. And that's why it still works today. Another thing is that, like I said, the signs are, they are just 
derived for, from. It's not a perfect alignment with these constellations that share the same name. So Scorpio, when we look at that big fat wheel, it doesn't line up with exactly the constellation of Scorpio in the sky. It doesn't. And we've known that in a progression, they continue to move a bit away from each other. But that does not change um, your sign. You know, that was the alignment 2,000 years ago. Then we start talking about progressions that are happening, but it doesn't change your sign. If you were um, a Leo, you're still a Leo today. Now, here's the other part, okay? Because we divided our pizza when we created this deal, when the Babylonians said, here it is, and as it advanced, and we created our pizza with 12 slices, we cannot have 13. The mathematical abstract division is independent of what stars or constellations it's near. We just talked about the fact that a division happens, a separation happens, and will continue to happen from it. So it doesn't matter which constellations are touching, near, making love to, fondling the elliptic. There are 12 signs because that's the model that we work with. So don't worry, you don't have to move on and get a different sign. So when we talk about some of these things and you get all riled up, I love when these conversations happen with any industry. When something big happens, it sparks conversation. It sparks new knowledge because we have a lot of people just coming into their understanding and their growth of astrology and just starting to see its value. So when somebody brings something up like this or it hits the media, then it gets widespread attention and everybody freaks out because I don't really know how to be an Aries. You know what I mean? Like... And I'm just here to tell you, you don't need to worry about that. The model that we're using in a Western sun, sun sign astrology still fits your sign. Now, does this mean that every astrologer should be closed-minded to advancements that come and us re-looking at the field of astrology? No, I don't think that that means that at all. I think that makes for a very silly astrologer, as a matter of fact. However, in the current practicing models that we use, and that most of us have a really intuitive connection to, and we read well for you guys, your sun sign is still your sun sign, and there's no need for you to freak out. All right, guys, I hope this explained a little something. I hope I did a good job at it. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe so that your friend knows she doesn't have to be a Pisces today. <laughs> and I will see you guys very soon in the next video. I love you guys. Bye.